Hi everybody, I'm Dan. I work with uh, Sojourn uh, Psychology. Uh, I handle the accounting end of things and I am a CPA. I'm, I classify myself now as semi-retired, not fully retired. Uh, the last uh, couple of presentations I've done, I've talked sort of about retirement. The last one I specifically done, I really looked at um, the psychological impact for me and I'm not a psychologist. Uh, so the different areas of my life as uh, found on the wellness wheel that we look at here and the different areas being the social, emotional, intellectual, physical, occupational and, and the spiritual areas. So I talked about when you go into retirement, how a lot of these areas um, that were previously fulfilled um, through work, etc. Now you had to backfill into that. Now I'm going to talk to you about uh, the area that really sort of threw me for a loop was looking at finances. When you think of retirement, um, all of a sudden the area of your finances take on a whole new meaning. Do you have enough to basically uh, make your golden years the golden years? So going back, you, you think about uh, historically, let's use an amount of $100,000. Back in uh, maybe the 80s, and I know for some of you that's, uh, uh, you don't quite recall that, but for us baby boomers, the 80s were interest rates of around 10-12%, um, and that was good interest. So on $100,000, you're making maybe ten to $12,000 a year. A thousand dollars a month uh, to supplement your um, retirement uh, kind of pension plan things like that and yeah okay so things are really going along quite well um, fast forward to today and I started thinking okay so a hundred thousand dollars yeah you work hard you save you put some money in your retirement income fund um, the RSPs you max out, uh, well, okay, maybe you have $100,000 again. So you say, okay, well, what am I going to do? You look at the bank and, uh, oh, maybe you're going to get 2% interest, uh, inflation's 2%, so you aren't making any money. So how much money can we take out? Well, you're supposed to be taking out certain percentages and the government as well advertised them and you are getting ahead and basically um, your retirement income isn't that good so you look at the stock market and everybody knows what happened with the stock market um, briefly just when uh, the coronavirus hit there was a report i read that the senior population in florida was more worried about their stock investments than the coronavirus so uh, you look at the stock market and yes, it went down. So you say, well, maybe I'm going to go to a financial advisor. Now I'm not a certified financial uh, planner, um, but you go to a financial advisor and they have this nice little um, acronym called MER, M-E-R, Management Expense Ratio. So let's look at $100,000. Um, if you say, well, okay, for easy figuring, I want to make, um, 5% interest. Okay, so your um, investment portfolio through the bank or wherever, uh, you look and say, oh, 5%, here we go. So you invested in that. Now, all of a sudden, you look at a management expense ratio of 2%. Uh, the example I looked at on Google was from a, a life company, and they said, okay, on a 10,000, that means you'll be spending $200. Oh, doesn't sound too bad. Fast forward to your $100,000 and all of a sudden that $200 amount jumps up to $2,000. Oh, $2,000 is 2%, yes, of your 5%. So if, let's look at it this way. 5% on $100,000 is $5,000. Your management expense ratio is $2,000. That leaves you $3,000 in your pocket. Well, okay, not not the best, 
But then comes taxes. Oh, uh, and all of a sudden you're uh, five thousand dollars. It's it's start to uh, get lower and lower. Now, management expense ratio. You have to pay the professionals. Obviously, they are suggesting that a management expense ratio should be 0.25 to 0.75 percent. That is better than two percent. Uh, obviously and supposedly you're getting the um, expertise of professional investors. The lower expense ratios, um, you can look at mutual funds but be very careful, make sure your expense ratio is uh, definitely under 1% or you can look at exchange traded funds and there are a number that are definitely in that 0.25 to 0.75 ratio. Now, the other thing that you need to look at is asset allocation. I have a book that I can really recommend. It's uh, all about asset allocation. The easy way to get started by Richard A. And the last name is spelled F-E-R-R-I. At the end of this vlog, we will post that on the uh, bottom. The, I had two books here, um, Retirement Income for Life, and your retirement income blueprint. Uh, I highlighted those briefly in the last um, vlog, but uh, we can also put those on. Educate yourself as best you can. You do need financial assistance along the way. If you are looking at um, some sort of professional advice, uh, you can, for uh, higher amounts, you can, um, invest with some firms that will just say look at we're just charge you a flat rate and then that way they are more vested in um, your better betterment um, and you have the um, more expertise uh, shall we say uh, with regards to your investment uh, goals so those are a few uh, things that we really need to look at um, one other thing before I sign off is the next vlog that I will be doing is will be focused primarily on Alberta. There are a number um, of tools that the Alberta government has for people who are retired and I'd just like to highlight them and we would have those uh, um, also available at the uh, end of that vlog. So I'm signing off now. Stay healthy. You'll notice I have my mask. I see a lot of people out there not wearing masks. Personally, I understand it, but I look at it this way. When I'm out in public, especially in the grocery stores, etc., I wear my mask. Just, it's a matter of courtesy. I work in an office where there'll be 17, shall we say, different individuals who would be definitely affected if I was the person that introduced COVID into this office. So. You know, be kind to others, think about it. I know it's cool to walk around without a mask. I love it without a mask, but anyhow, that's why I wear the mask. Bye now.